You may watch him over several months, may only see him on trail cam photos, or maybe it's just a quick glimpse while he's on the run. A buck, that buck is the one you can identify in your sleep. But just how easy is it to target one particular buck? It's gonna be a lot harder on public land that is on private land. You know, I don't usually name deer, but every once in a while. You've been patterning this buck all season and the rut hits, now what? Whitetail TV. If you are a deer hunter, you've probably, at least in the last 10 years, seen a buck in the wild that you or someone in your party has named. It may be an antler characteristic, a body style, or where he is located, but the names we give our bucks add to the hunt. Targeting a certain buck, should you do it? Do you want to do it? It's really popular these days. You see people naming deer, going after individual deer. Why do they do that? In most cases, it's all about management. When you want to manage a property, especially larger properties or cooperatives, people will name deer just for the fact that they can keep tabs if they're talking about the same deer. Rather than talking about the big eight pointer, they might give that eight pointer a name. If you really want to become a better whitetail hunter, then you should maybe try sometime. But if you just enjoy whitetail hunting, then targeting a specific buck, hey, it can make you very frustrated. There isn't a topic that's more misunderstood and wildly exaggerated in this industry than patterning bucks. Why? Because if I sit here and I pretend that I knew where that buck was bedded, I knew where he was traveling. I knew where he was feeding. If I know all that stuff, man, don't I ever look smart because you guys don't know all that. Guess what? Neither do I. People go on about the detail like this simply to make themselves look so much smarter than they really are. The reality of part patterning a buck is really nothing more than finding one kink, one kink in his armor, one tendency that he repeats, not every day, not multiple times a day, but it is a repeatable tendency that we can take advantage of. Now, why would you target a specific buck? Well, the first reason is obvious. He has giant antlers. He's the jumbo buck that you've always dreamed of putting on your wall. The second reason you might wanna target a specific whitetail is the fact that he's maybe He's maybe a bully and he's pushing other deer around. He maybe doesn't have the genetic makeup that you want. You don't want him breeding all the does on your hunting property and spreading those genes to a deer that's maybe just a four by four in character or even a three by three. You're looking for something a little better, a five by five. So removing that bully of a buck, spreading bad genes, it's a good answer to your management problem. A big misnomer is that targeting specific deer is only for the elite privileged, only for the people who own land or who have access to private property. Not the case. I grew up hunting public land, did it for 30 years, and there's a lot of guys, John Eberhardt is one, Steve Bartilla has cut his teeth on hunting public land. You can target individual deer off of public land, but when you're targeting them off of public land, you're not targeting them off of taking them out of the the deer herd because they're the bully, they're the, the big mature buck, you're targeting them because it's probably the best buck on that land that you have to hunt, but absolutely, if you use cameras right, if you can't use cameras on public land, you're afraid about them getting stolen, you can still scout that the old fashioned way and target an individual buck just like you would anywhere else. Land of Whitetail is brought to you by Cuddyback Digital, more deer, fewer blanks by Sig Sauer Electro Optics, never settle. By Thompson Center, America's master gun maker. Hornady, accurate, deadly, dependable.
and buy scent killer gold with hunt dry plus technology apply it dry it and go hunt coming up next targeting a specific buck depends on a few different factors first of all how much time do you have? It takes a lot of time to narrow down how this buck lives and moves about and how you're gonna be able to ambush him. You just can't go out there walking around and hope to run into him. Oh, it might work, but it definitely takes a lot more time if you're gonna target a specific buck. This is Land of Whitetail. This segment of Land of Whitetail is brought to you by Matthews. During the spring and summer, when scouting dominates action for deer hunters, it's the one or two big bucks that catch your eye, that gets your attention. Even though the optimism of September can wane into the later months, the adrenaline of targeting a certain buck can weigh on your patience, but if fulfilled, is a memory unlike any other. Targeting a specific buck depends on a few different factors. First of all, how much time do you have? It takes a lot of time to narrow down how this buck lives and moves about and how you're gonna be able to ambush him. You just can't go out there walking around and hope to run into him. Oh, it might work, but it definitely takes a lot more time if you're gonna target a specific buck. The second thing is, how much land do you have to hunt? Sure, there's that old saying, deer live in one square mile, but if you only have 20 acres to hunt, how much time is he spending on that 20 acres? That land size goes back to time. Can you spend that much time out there on a small postage stamp piece of land to get that buck? And the third thing is the buck willing. You know, is he a mature, savvy buck? Is he going to show himself during daylight or is he leading a nocturnal lifestyle? Targeting a specific buck, it depends on a lot of factors, and a lot of times those factors, those elements are out of your hands. As a buck gets older, he's gonna exhibit certain characteristics that may be beneficial or not beneficial for the deer herd that you're hunting. In certain situations, a dominant buck might not be the biggest buck and that might be a buck you want to take out. That's a buck you want to target because if you get him out of the herd, it's going to allow some of these younger deer that have more desirable antler traits to take over and occupy the space where that buck was. Dan Schmidt is in Illinois for the opening of shotgun season and is on the trail of a buck called Tilter. So I'm invited down to Illinois to hunt with my friend Steve Bartilla. I usually treat this hunt as a meat hunt. It is an opportunity to fill the freezer with some great tasting venison, especially from some of the extra does that he has on hand. But I also had the opportunity to take home a buck. The buck opportunities I have on this trip weren't just any deer. We we're gonna target some specific deer, some quote unquote management deer, and I always use that term lightly. Basically, it's certain deer that Steve knows throughout the years, they're fully mature, they've hit their peak antler growth, and they're not really gonna get any bigger. Those were some specific individual deer that I had an opportunity, if I saw one, that I could take home with me as well. We wanna kill Tilter for two reasons and two reasons only. A, he is a mature buck. If you're not gonna kill a buck at five and a half years old, what the heck are you waiting for? B, he is not expressing tremendous, tremendous antler potential. Now, by shooting him, are we gonna improve the genetics? Heck no. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna take that hole on that ridge and we're gonna open it back up again. Now, one of those up and coming tremendous bucks that have all the potential in the world have the possibility of slipping in that hole and filling that niche. So that is what Dan's mission is today. His mission is to go out there and take out that buck to create a hole for one of the younger immature yet genetically charged animals that could potentially become a buck of a lifetime. The forecast called for wicked winds and almost every place I hunt if you have high winds you're just not going to see deer that's what happened to us. We got here opening day was Friday the winds were 30 miles an hour 35 miles an hour gusts up to 40 
deer just weren't moving. I mean, we didn't see a single deer on opening day. And that's pretty depressing. You go out, it's opening day of gun season. No matter where you hunt, you're excited. You want to at least fill a doe tag and now you don't see anything. Okay, we get in the stand the second day. Kind of the same thing. The weather had not changed yet, but a front was coming in, which is money for deer hunting. I mean, when you have a cold front moving in, there was it got a little bit windy. That was a struggle. We did see a couple deer that next morning, but things really turned on. Once that front moved in, the temperature dropped, deer started moving. We had doe tags in our pocket. I did not hesitate to take the first good opportunity at a nice big mature doe. I got her. I got her. I got her. Standing right there. She's going. And she is. Down. She's down right there. We did it. We did it. Big. Look at this. Do not love that. Oh, there, white belly. White belly. I see it. Yes. Yes. So I got one doe on the board. That's awesome. We're feeling great. But I still have more doe tags in my pocket and I still have my sights set on one of the bucks that Steve's been telling me about. You're watching Land of Whitetail. A buck. That buck is the one you can identify in your sleep. But just how easy is it to target one particular buck? My feelings on this have changed over the years. When it first became vogue, to target individual deer. I thought it was kind of a, to be honest, I thought it was kind of a pompous, elitist attitude towards deer management. The more I learn about it, the more I understand that we have become really efficient private land deer managers, that we can actually do that and target an individual deer. That can take, it's not for everyone, but it can take your deer hunting experience to another level. Dan Schmidt is in Illinois for the opening of shotgun season and is on the trail of a buck called Tilter. This is the buck you are trying to kill. Because I have such a great long history with Tilter, I was able to show Dan picture after picture after picture, video clip after video clip of this deer. The reason why he called him Tilter was simple. He, he had a rack that kind of tilted forward, just a really nice eight pointer. He had the, the makings of some G4s on the end, but that's all he really was in his life, was a really nice eight pointer. So we had high hopes and we headed for a hay bale blind right on the cusp of Tilter's Range. So we get set up in the blind and we're expecting action pretty quick. That front's moving through, these deer are still feeding. It's right on the tail end of the rut. The rut's pretty much over, but we're figuring, you know, that's gonna be a good thing. These does are gonna be out. The ones that have been bred should be out and moving about. Sure enough, out of nowhere, here comes a doe. Pretty nice size doe too. I said, hey, I, I got another doe tag. I'm not gonna hesitate, it's really early. We're gonna try to take this one on as well. I no sooner get set up and get prepared for that, I see a flash out of the corner of my eye right behind the doe. Hang on, let's hold the, let's hold the phone here. I look up, oh, it's a buck, it's a good buck. Let's put up my Nikons, put them up. I immediately said, it's Tilter. And he makes a beeline across the field. And I knew it was gonna have to happen fast. We have to get set up on him and stop him because he's not stopping on his own. Okay, so we're in this blind. It's impossible to film in there. You know, you got one or two little windows, and if that buck shows up in one window, he might walk right through it and be out of it. That's what happened to us. I got set up. This buck was almost in the creek bottom. I had to bleed him to Man. stop. I took Man. the shot. I got it. We just missed getting it on film, but the shot felt really good. It happens just that fast, you know. Obviously we didn't get the impact, but now, you know, my heart's racing, the fun begins because it felt really good. I think I have a deer on the ground, but I'm very conservative. I'm never 100% sure until I have my hands on him. Now I get a text. I just shot Tilter. I'll tell you what, I'm happy, but at the same time, I'm a little anxious. I'm a little anxious because Asking somebody to look at a deer and identify it just like that, that's a big ask. That is a big ask 
particularly for people that don't do this every single day of their life like I'm lucky enough to do. You know, how many people are, realistically, how many people out in the hunting world have to sit there and decide exactly how old is that deer? Do I recognize that deer? Is he a deer I want to shoot? Is he a deer I don't want to shoot? That's not hunting for 99.9% .9 of the people out there and it shouldn't be. Okay, we don't train ourselves to do these things, so there's always a little bit of apprehension. We get out there, and it's, it's low soybeans. They're all dried up. It should be perfect for soaking up any kind of blood, at least that you can see something. We don't find a drop of blood. No big deal. Don't get too excited yet. But you know how that, it creeps into you. There's a little bit of uncertainty. You know, was I, was I on them? Did I, did I squeeze off that shot correctly? always go with that gut instinct and my gut instinct was telling me when I squeezed that trigger I saw that deer hump up and he took off I thought I made a great shot I'll be honest with you when he said he shot tilter I was pretty sure he did the catch was he didn't see him go down he wasn't sure how good of a shot he put on it that was what I was anxious about Steve circles through the creek bottom and pops out behind me with Abby Hainer our camera person and they're standing in the field and I'm about 10 yards into the creek bottom, and I'm, and I'm like, what are they doing over there? Sure enough, I get about even with Dan, there he is laying right there. I happen to know, I happen to know that Abby, the camera girl on the job, who is a tremendous camera girl, was caught, with, caught in a situation where she couldn't get the kill shot on tape. I know, I'm gonna go talk to Abby, because they're separated looking for blood. I'm gonna go talk to Abby, I'm going to explain to her that the deer is laying here but that we have to get Dan's natural reaction to finding this deer. That, the, that is the priceless part of this entire hunt, is Dan losing his snot. So they start approaching me. Now this, is, this adds even more to the story. I looked in the creek bottom and I see a perfectly bleached white deer rack. Obviously that's been there for a long time. I'm like, holy cow. Well, in Illinois, you can't pick them up, but I, I wanted to go take a look at it. Dan's beelining for that skull. This can't happen because it's right next to the buck. And we have nothing, none of this on film. So I'm, Dan, Dan. And I'm gonna go pick up that skull and I hear Steve, Dan, stop, Dan, stop. And I'm like, yeah, you know, hang on one second. I wanna go check out this, this deer skull. So now I am, Dan, <laughs> yelling <laughs> to get him to get over here now. <laughs> so he does, obviously doesn't have any clue what's going on. <laughs> um, he walks over, he's kind of got his, tail between his legs because he thinks he was doing something wrong and really all I'm trying to do is save the show. Oh, do you, you think we can find him? I'm pretty sure we can because he's laying right over there. Yes! <laughs> yes! Yes! I saw this. I was going to come pick it up. This deserves another one. Oh, thank you, Steve. I told you I was just going to Oh, That's him. That is Tilter. Tilter is dead, long live Tilter. Holy buckets, Steve, that is a beautiful deer. Because he did, I'll be honest with you, I kind of enjoyed it a little bit. And his reaction, hey, it is vintage Dan Schmidt. It does not get any better or more real than that. And you know what? It was a pretty darn good day. And it was the buck that I'd sent him in to kill. We show you that every week, he grows him big. He hunts a big and he lets me hunt him big and that is a big buck. Holy mackerel. Coming up next. We're all trying to find more time, especially hunting time. You're watching Land of Whitetail. Land of Whitetail is brought to you by Cuddyback Digital, more deer, Fewer blanks. By Sig Sauer Electro Optics. Never settle. By Thompson Center, America's master gun maker. Hornady. Accurate, deadly, dependable. And by Scent Killer Gold with Hunt Dry Plus technology. Apply it, dry it, and go hunt. We're all trying to find more time, especially hunting time. One way to do it is to team that expensive hunting rifle of yours up with high quality factory ammunition. 
A good example is Hornady's Precision Hunter ammunition teamed with their ELDX bullet. Now they knew that tipped bullets were being deformed from high temperatures while flying at a high rate of speed. They did the research, they created the heat shield tip. It doesn't deform and it makes your rifle more accurate. Now, if you don't shoot long range shots, then don't really worry about it. But if you ever think that that whitetail buck is gonna step out at five, six, seven hundred yards or beyond, and these new rifles can shoot that far, then you wanna consider the ELDX bullet in the Precision Hunter lineup. Remember we were talking about saving time? Well, that's exactly what Precision Hunter ammunition will do for you. In the old days, like last week, or even 10 or 20 years ago, to get that kind of accuracy, you had to reload. Reloading, it takes a lot of time. Precision Hunter ammunition, dollar for dollar, it doesn't hardly cost any more than any other box of ammo out there. High quality ammo now, but yet you get great accuracy and a bullet that expands not only at close distances when it's traveling at 3,000 feet per second, but also out there way over the horizon when it may be only traveling 1,600 feet per second. Try Precision Hunter ammunition from Hornady, and I bet you're going to be amazed at how well your deer rifle shoots. This is Land of Whitetail.